done for us. Lord, we can't live without you. We can't live without you, King Jesus. We worship you tonight. Have your way in us. Holy Spirit, have your way in us. Give you our hearts tonight. Receive our worship. And be and have our praises according to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. It gives strength to me.
From the inside of me, 
from the inside it opened you You may be seated. I'm going to conclude this Sunday night with uh, some teaching to complement what Pastor taught on this morning about the covenants of God. Amen? So you can't talk about the covenant without going into the blood because that's, that's what that's what caused the blood covenant to be so powerful was the blood. You know, the Bible says that almost all things are sanctified by the shedding of blood. And without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. Amen? So we're going to do a Bible study, and we're not going to go real long tonight, but we're going to do a Bible study, and we're going to talk about the blood. I preached on it or taught on one aspect of it here, oh, about a year ago or so, a little bit more than a year ago. But I don't think we talk about the blood enough. Are you out there? I'm going to need your help tonight because, you know, angels aren't talking real loud. So I need an amen here and there. Praise God. Is that all right? 
Thank you. Thank you. Without a doubt, the most valuable gift from the Father to the church is the blood of Jesus. You know, I've found out that very few Christians know the true value and power of the blood. You know, we sing about the blood. We sing songs concerning the power of the blood. There's power, power, wonder-working power. Yes. And it's true, amen? I think sometimes, though, in our worship, we got to be careful and cautious not to just make it a sing-along, a sing-a-thon, you know? Uh, pastor was talking about, you know, God desiring those to worship Him from spirit and in truth, amen? That's what Jesus said. You know, the hour's coming and now is when the Father and the true worshipers, the Father's going to receive that worship from those that worship Him in spirit and in truth. We simply don't really understand the principle of the, uh, of the, the blood. Sometimes we plead the blood. You know, I like to plead the blood. Yes. But I also like to teach... Uh, our congregation over the years, what it really means to plead the blood, because sometimes it just becomes a cliche statement where people have heard older saints that actually know what it means, and they think, well, it's some magical incantation to bind devils. And let me tell you, it's not a magical thing, but it's a spiritual, powerful thing. But in order for it to be powerful, you got to understand, you got to have faith and intention when you utilize that that weapon, because. When we plead the blood, what are we saying? Do we really understand? Well, it goes back to the covenant the pastor taught on this morning. You know, it, it, it's uh, predicated on the, on, the, on the covenant that God made with Jesus Christ and that he bequeathed to us as our inheritance. Yeah. We have to understand that because devils are so good at messing with your head. Amen. And a lot of times I've found, even me in my younger days as a Christian, when the devil will resist you a little bit and he doesn't go away real easy or he kind of fights you and bucks your mind and, and you go, well, gee, it's not working. Well, you know, that ain't how it is. They're just being resistant. And that's when you plead the blood from a point of understanding that the covenant of God uh, and the blood that, that inaugurated that covenant is powerful and it never loses its power. Can you say amen? We said it this morning in 1 Peter chapter, uh, I believe it's chapter 1 verse 18, where it talks about you weren't redeemed with such things like silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so that blood never loses its power. Uh, and let me say this, when Jesus went to heaven, he took his blood and sprinkled it on the mercy seat, which the Ark of the Covenant and the Holy of Holies was only a type and a shadow of that which was real. You say, how did he do it? I don't know for sure, but this is what I feel like God showed me. Even though Jesus bled out big time, right? But when, when that soldier stuck that spear in his side and brought forth the blood and the water, there was still blood in there. And when Jesus went to heaven, he took that blood from his side and he went pff, pff, seven times on the mercy seat for us. It cleansed, it cleansed the temple of our heart. Can you say amen? amen? It made a way back for us to come in boldly to the throne of grace. And let me tell you, there's a throne in heaven, but there's a throne in our heart where we put Jesus number one in our heart. Amen? amen. And that blood becomes a powerful tool and weapon of warfare. So when we understand what I'm saying here and you go, devil, I plead the blood, you're saying I'm not guilty. Yeah. And I'm saying that I have all these promises, precious promises from God. I've been given authority and power in the name of Jesus. Now listen to me. We can't live any way we want and expect this to work real good. Amen. Why? Because it takes faith when you plead the blood of the covenant. And when you're in condemnation, when you feel like you're guilty, whether you truly are or not, but when the adversary is beating on your brain, telling you that you've sinned, that you're, you're in condemnation, God's just mad at you and you buy into that, you're ineffective pleading the blood. Because your faith won't work when you feel condemned. But when you know the Word of God and you understand and know that you could be cleansed by the precious blood of Jesus. In fact, I, I'm going to deviate for a minute. Go over, if you will, to uh, 1 John. 1 John. I'm on a roll here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'll tell you, when, when I hear about the, coven, the blood covenant of God, pastor preached it so good this morning. When I hear about that, it fires me up. Amen. Gets me going. It goes, oh yeah, that's right. I'm a child of the king. I'm just not some beggar that comes in dragging my knuckles before the throne of God going, can I have a morsel of bread? It's like he said, you know, his children, they get, they get a whole refrigerator full of food. You know, anytime my kids come over to my house, 
the first time, thing they do is go to, their, go to the refrigerator. My daughter came over and cut my hair and cut my mom's hair yesterday, Jamie. And the first thing she did was open up my refrigerator and start grabbing ham and stuff out of there and munching on cheese. She didn't have to ask me, even though she's 40, what is she, 45 or 6? I forget. What is she? 46. Jeepers. I don't know when we got our church paid off, and I don't know how old my oldest daughter is sometimes. It's how time is when you get older. But, you know, she, she didn't have to ask me. She just walks in and does it. Now, would I go to their house and do it? Probably not. Not that they would, you know, keep me from, but they probably don't got anything in the refrigerator like we do. Just saying. But anyway, 1 John chapter 5, or chapter 1, verse 5, starting verse 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, what's that? It's a revelation knowledge of who we are in Christ and the fact that he's king of kings and lord of lords and his, the light that shines from him is reflecting off of us, but it's also exposing darkness in our lives and in the world. But if we're walking in the light, that means God is, he's, he's, actually, he's actually bringing to light things in our life that are making us less than. It's not so he can go, I knew you had that hidden back there in that room. That's not what it's about. But he says, but if we walk in the light, verse 7, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And what? And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Of course, you could go on down to 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Amen. You know, our success or our victory in this life depends on a vital living revelation of the power of the blood of Jesus in your life. You know, the, the, the teaching on the blood covenant this morning, there's so much more than just what, and, and you taught it great, but you and I both know, man, you could teach for three weeks on that and still probably have room for more teaching because the blood isn't just some light little thing that we do when we do communion. It's, it's something very powerful that we have to continually keep a grasp on it and understand why we are clean before our Lord. Why there's therefore no condemnation of those who are in Christ Jesus. And of course it goes on to say who walk after, not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Amen. Uh, yeah, we have to learn to walk by the Spirit. We have to learn to walk in the light of Jesus Christ and the revelation of His Word, right? <clears throat> but because here's the thing, God's not condemning you anymore. But I've done things to be condemned. Yeah, the devil's condemning you. You're condemning you. Your neighbor might be condemning you. But trust me on this. I don't care what any preacher teaches you. If they teach you this, I don't care how good their ministry is. And there are some that their ministry is super great. But you'll still hear them say, just like Job, they'll preach on Job and they'll say, you know, there was a day that the, the sons of God came before uh, God and, and the devil came and, and the Lord goes, where, are you, what, where have you been? He said, walking to and fro throughout the earth. Have you considered my servant Job? And, and the devil went to accuse Job before God. Let me tell you something. From the day that Jesus ascended into heaven and sprinkled his blood on the mercy seat, the devil had no more place to go before God and blame you for anything or to bring an accusation to God about you. He'll bring the accusation to you, to me, to somebody else, and you may be guilty. But before God, you are cleansed. Does that mean you don't have to repent or your sin doesn't impact your life? That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the devil has no right to come against a child of God. Amen. Amen. You know, when my kids were in school and they did some bad things here and there and probably were guilty of this and that, I'll tell you what, I didn't just take what teachers said at face value. A lot of times my kids told me, that's not true, and I believed them and I found out I was wrong. But, but, you know, I'm going to defend my kids because I went to school and I've seen what happens in school sometimes, the way they get on a kid and they won't leave them alone and they pick at them and pick at them. Sure, after a while, the kid becomes guilty. But I'm saying when it comes to God, you're his child and the only one that's got the right to correct you or spank your little hiney in the spirit, which is not with cancer, not with broken bones, not with tragedy and disaster. Amen. 
if you notice, God never brought the tragedy to Job's house. It was the devil. And we could go into that, but that's not what we're teaching on tonight, right? We're talking about the blood. The blood. I don't know why my computer is being weirdo. There we go. Get in here again so I can get to my points. But anyway, are you okay with this tonight? So you're never going to enjoy the full benefits as a Christian until you give the blood of Jesus its rightful place in your life. What is the value of the blood to you? Hebrews 9.22, Pastor, he, he read some of these scriptures this morning, but we're going we're gonna to read them again. In fact, according to the law of Moses, nearly everything was purified with blood, for without the, the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness. Amen. How do I know if the blood was ever shed in my heart? Well, first of all, have you called upon the name of the Lord? Romans 10, 13 says, whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Have you ever repented for your sins and asked for forgiveness? Of course you have if you're born again. For all that call upon the name of the Lord, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, but all that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 5, 9 says, much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. Here's three ways you can know. Are you prepared to walk in the light? Have you made the decision to walk in the Spirit and walk in the light of God's Word? You know what? I've been ding-donging around my whole life doing my thing, but today, today, tonight, or whenever it was, I'm making a dedication of my life to Jesus Christ. You may have been saved. You may have asked Jesus in your heart, been born again, but you never made him Lord. There's people that have never made Jesus Lord, and they, they wonder why they can go along and do whatever they do, and then when the critical moment comes down where they need to call upon God, it's not that God's not listening to them, it's that they don't really know how to get a hold of him. Because even if he's talking to them, they're not acclimated to his voice because they haven't spent time with him. I've had people tell me, Christians tell me, I can't hear the voice of God. I, I've never heard. I said, well, that's not scriptural. Come on. I said, it's not on God's part. It's on your part. Well, do you hear the voice of God? I, yeah, well, how does he talk to you? I go, well, through impressions most of the time. But a lot of times he, he transmits by the Holy Spirit to my spirit, which relays it to my mind. And based on the scripture I have in my mind, uh, depends uh, on how clear the voice of God is to me. And even though I got a lot of scripture hidden in my heart, if I'm not staying in the word of God, it's hard to hear God. Because here's why the Holy Spirit's dealing with your heart all the time and trying to sanctify. You know, sanctification has to do with, first of all, setting you apart as a living sacrifice. That's the start of it. You're born again, and now God is sanctifying you and setting you apart for a purpose, but you are a living sacrifice unto God. That's how your life should be. When you're doing the best you can, you may not, don't ever compare yourself to somebody else, but you may not be doing it as good as this person, but you're trying the best you can. That's where we get tripped up, and I know I've been guilty of it. I watch this person, and go, man, if I could just have the, the relationship with God that they have, well, I can. I found, actually found out I can. Yeah. You see, that's the difference between some people. They've let the world uh, mess their mind up so much and make them feel so insecure and so, you know, nothing. And, and my wife knows that I fight those kind of things because I, I went through a lot when I was a young kid, you know. Uh, and it wasn't my mom and dad. It was, it was other people and teachers and things. And then my own choices, too. But, but I tell you what, um, I've had to fight through a lot of that. And if I didn't understand the blood of Jesus, if I didn't understand the love of God that like I do, the devil would be able to beat me up all the time because I have a past. How many of you got a past? Don't tell me what it is. It's your business before God. Amen. But I'm telling you, the blood of Jesus cleansed you and gives you a, a clean conscience too. Are you all listening? Amen. I'm telling you, God wants you to walk in victory. Hallelujah. So, number one, you know, when, when you're under attack, you can call upon the blood of Jesus. You know that you're sprinkled, right? Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you because it is the blood of the covenant. You know, Pastor talked about when you make a covenant with somebody or with God, you have certain rights in that covenant, and they have certain rights. God, in covenant with Jesus, and when I enter into that covenant, I've given God my life, and He's given me His Son's life. 
Amen? And everything and every blessing that Jesus, as the man Christ Jesus, uh, received from the Father, he has given it into to mine and your hands in his last will and testament. Our covenant is different than the covenant, the old covenant. Yeah. It's a new covenant based on better promises. Amen? Yeah. So when we're under attack, we have the right to use the blood of Jesus against the devil. Now I'm going to give you something. Please, if you're, if you're in your Bible, turn over to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. <clears throat> Maybe I want to get into my Bible too. Revelation chapter 12. I'm going to teach you something. Some of you have heard this before. And I want to go to Revelation 12, I think starting at If you will listen to me, you'll get a revelation here. And like I said, not every preacher te teaches like this. I know some really great teachers who, who teach things way over my head, but when it comes to this, they don't get it. Okay? Revelation 12 is like an interlude. It's like an overview. It's showing you some past, present, and some future things. Okay? And, and the way it is, it's kind of compressed. And so you have it, and it's done in symbology. And you have to remember that you interpret Scripture with Scripture. So if you don't have a grasp on the Old Testament, if you don't have a grasp on the New Testament, you're not going to get this. In Revelation 12, 9, it says, And the great dragon, how many of you know that's the devil, right? Was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. There's the past. One third of, uh, of Satan's uh, angels and them were cast out. Okay? And, and here's where people think. They're thinking in Revelation 12, this is future. Michael and his archangels are going to fight, and then the devil's going to be kicked out of heaven. No, he's already been kicked out and down to the earth, yet he is uh, a prince of the power of air under the heavens. The, the blackness of space in this, but heaven, the third heaven, he's not allowed up there. So his domain is down here, and it's in the, the, the spirit that works up here in the air, the prince of the power of the air, okay? And I heard, and his angels were cast out with him. Verse 10, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation. When? Now, okay, listen, when did salvation come? Now we're in the past, a little more present than this thing that happened to the devil. And so you're, it's broken up, so get this. I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now is come salvation and strength and the power and the, or the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. So Jesus obviously has been born, right? And something's taking place here. The kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of the brethren is cast down which accused them before our God day and night. This is what I was just saying. But you'll hear preachers saying this is something in the, in the future. No, this has already happened. Yes. Okay? When did that happen? Well, Ephesians chapter 4 says, What is he that uh, de ascended, but he that descended first in the lower parts of the earth? Yes. Amen. He took back those keys of death, hell, and the grave. And now he's ascended on high, and he's led captivity captive, and he gave gifts to men. Not only just spiritual gifts, not only the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, but other gifts, spiritual gifts, the blood, the power of the blood, the covenant, amen? Yes. And look what it says in verse 11. Who? And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto the righteousness of God. And with the mouth confession is made. I've been saved by the blood of the Lamb. And I've overcome the devil in my life. Even if he's picking on me, beating on my head, he can't take away my salvation and keep me from heaven. Amen? Amen? Yeah. When did that happen? It happened when Jesus ascended. Touch me not. I'm going to go up before the Father as a high priest. Devil, you can't come up here no more. So you got to see Revelation 12 as an overview of past, present, and future. Let's move on here. 
And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Jesus is my Lord. How do we get saved? We must confess with our mouth. We tell everybody, when you've asked Jesus in your heart, now go tell somebody. That's part of it. Did you know that's part of the formula? Go tell somebody. Because if you're not ashamed of him, you'll speak up for him. Can you say amen? I remember after I got saved, I had to go back to all my bros who didn't believe in God, most of them, that I partied with and tell them about Jesus. Get laughed at. Oh, Francis, two weeks from now, you'll be back here smoking pot and hanging out with us. Well, no, no, it ain't going to happen that way. But I'm going to tell you, Jesus is the Lord of my life. And then I had to separate. These are some guys that I grew up from second grade with. And they were in my neighborhood, the Shoop Street Freaks, in between Inglewood Avenue and Hawthorne and, and, and uh, Shoop Street and La Cienega. Amen. We all hung out. We weren't violent gang or nothing, but we were the party hounds. And we knew each other ever since second grade. And there was about 30 of us. And I had to go to them and tell them, I love Jesus. Do you want to love him too? No, we ain't hanging out with you unless you come back and party with us. That's not going to happen. You got to leave those that don't want to go with you. Yeah. Amen. Therefore rejoice. Now notice though, it says back here in verse 11, they love not their lives unto death. Well, this talks about martyrs, obviously, and there will be a lot of martyrs, but it also means a living sacrifice. Yeah. Take up your cross and die daily for Jesus' sake. Amen? What are you dying to? Dying to your buddies? Dying to drugs? Dry, dying to alcohol? Uh, uh, seeking after money and fame and all that kind of stuff? Amen? You're dying to all that because you're walking in the light. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. And woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Now we're coming, we're coming into the future here. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. And the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having, having a great wrath, because he knows his time is short. So there's a war in heaven, and Michael and his archangels have been fighting since the beginning. And Jesus kicked them out of the third heaven. They're no longer allowed to go there. So where do they go? They came down to the second heaven. And now in this future tense, they are battling in the heavenlies right now over principalities and over uh, regions of the earth kingdoms and things and and there's coming a day where michael and them are going to knock him down and it's it's getting real it's getting real soon you'd say i can't tell because darkness is covering the yeah but gross darkness will cover the earth but the bible says that the light of god's glory will shine through us arise shine for thy light has come and the glory of the lord has risen upon you ephesians chapter 5 says i'm coming after a glorious church without spot or wrinkle and the Bible says he's going to present it to himself. That means Jesus is going to clean up your garments. And Jesus is going to iron your garments. And yes, we're supposed to prepare ourselves too. But he's going to be the iron that does it. And we have to yield to his will in our lives. Amen? Yeah. As the day gets closer, we got to quit ding-donging around about everything. Quit this stuff of yo-yo life. Amen? Get your minds geared up. I mean, the best way I know to do it is every day wake up and think, God, are you coming to get, or is Jesus coming today to get us? I'm looking for Jesus. I will be so, so disappointed if I have to die and then be resurrected from the grave. But I guess once I get resurrected, I won't care, right? But I am really believing that somewhere while I'm alive, Jesus will come. That may be 90 like my mom. I don't know. But it may be next year. I mean, the way things are kicking off right now in the Middle East, and I know there's been wars there forever, but it's looking crazy sometimes. And, you know, no man is our Savior, but God may use them as a tool to kind of either bring things to a head or simmer things down for a while. And we've said it over and over in this church. If we have a window of grace, it's a window of grace to reap a harvest. Yes. You're getting time to get your family in order if, if they'll let you. You know, I can't make any of my kids or grandchildren uh, serve God. I mean, I've been, I've been praying my, my children, my nieces and nephews in, and at least a couple of my nieces are coming. Amen. My granddaughter will come once in a while. My sisters are back. Pastor Craig has just had a blessing in the last couple of weeks. His brother, uh, Kevin, has, has 
come back to church. These are people that were in our first incarnation of our first youth group. His brother Todd and his girlfriend were here today. And then we had big Quentin back here uh, that I haven't seen in a long time, but he was one of the the, the guys back in the original uh, youth group at Victorious Life Church, and he's come back with his family. People are coming back. I know Pastor Al stopped me at the door. I don't, now I don't know what, how many years, because I don't get years right, but it seems like about five years ago, he said they're coming back. And I'm like, who? He goes, and I had actually happened to have prayed for some of my chil children that day, and it was a word from God. Whether he knew he was giving me a word, I was headed back to the, the office, and he said, our kids are coming back. They're coming back. Yeah. And he wasn't just talking about his or mine. He was talking about our kids, because we, we consider this, this little church a family church. Amen. You know, and if you've ever been a part of this church for a year, two years, five years, 30 years, you're part of our family if you call this place home. No matter whether you come and go, well, we love it when you come. Amen? Praise God. All right. How many of you got something out of that, Revelation 12? I'm telling you, you'll hear some of the best preachers in the world not teach that completely right. But I promise you that's right. You say, how do you know? Who are you? Well, I'm a child of God, and I'm a, I'm a preacher and a teacher, and I've studied this out for years and years, and I know the Holy Spirit can teach me things that other people might not have the full revelation on, but I'm not the only one that teaches it. What is the advantage of your heart being sprinkled with the blood? Now, remember, when he sprinkled the mercy seat, it was as good as if he sprinkled your heart in type and shadow, because the day you asked Jesus to come into your heart, that blood was appropriated to your heart. And when I see the blood, the Bible says, I'll pass over you. Ephesians 1, 7. I'm going to give you some scriptures. Are you ready? This is salvation and redemption here. In whom we have redemption. What does it mean? God bought us back. Yes. We're no longer under the control of Satan and the prince of the power of the air. In whom we have redemption through his blood. So, so listen to me. I don't belong to the devil. Come on. You know, I don't have any right coming to your kid trying to tell him what to do. Or tell them, you know, I mean, if I'm their teacher back in Sunday school, but I don't have a right to go to somebody else and tell their kids what to do and try to uh, lord it over them or undermine their mom and dad, amen? Well, the devil ain't got a right to come to you and I. But we sometimes, we, okay, whatever you say. No, we need to fight back. Even if some of what he says is true, if he, if he catches you in, in some kind of sin and he begins to accuse you, stop right there and go, just a second, Mr. Devil. God, I'm so sorry that I sinned against you. And I just want to thank the devil for, for re reminding me that I sinned. And so it's you alone that I've sinned against, and I ask for your forgiveness. Now, what were you saying, Mr. Devil? I bind you in the name of Jesus, and I plead the blood against you. The blood says, not guilty. Come on. Shut up in Jesus' name. You can't talk to the devil like that. I do all the time. All the time. I tell him to be quiet. I hear him in my head at home sometimes. I'm walking through. The, shut up, Annie. Who are you talking to, Dad? I'm talking to the devil. Tell him to shut up. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. Sometimes that's the way it is, right? He's messing with your head. Sometimes we can hear him better than we can God. That's tragic. So salvation and redemption. Number two, peace. And there's so many scriptures. I'm just giving you a couple of them out of, you know, each one of these things. Number two, the blood gives us peace. And having, Colossians 1.20, and having made peace through his blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him, through Jesus, I say whether there be things in heaven or in earth, we have peace through his blood. Number three, we have an entrance, and Pastor talked about this this morning. We have entrance into God's presence. Hebrews 10, 19, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Now, he was talking about his kids having boldness. He buys them two refrigerators full of food and a cabinet full of food, and they go, hey, can we go to McDonald's? That's boldness. Hopefully you said no. <laughs> anyway, entrance into his presence. You can also uh, reference uh, Hebrews 4, 16. Therefore, let us come boldly before the throne of grace that we might, have, we might obtain mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Amen? Amen? We can come boldly to God. Especially, you know what? When I come to God, you know, I invoke the covenant. Not to remind God, because God knows, but I want to let God know that I know too. 
And, and God likes that because that's faith. We're speaking faith when we speak the covenant. When we pray for healing and things, and we understand and know that healing is the children's bread and that by His stripes we're healed. Can you say amen? amen. And so when we understand those scriptures, those are part of our promises. Let me say this too. All the good promises from the Old Testament are ours also. We just don't have the curse anymore because we're not under the curse of the law. Jesus became a curse for us. You say, but yeah, but the curse causeless won't come like a sparrow flit. I know you can bring a curse upon yourself when you walk in sin and Satan, the adversary, sees it and he goes, I'm a legalistic adversary. I'm coming to get you. And if you don't have a lawyer or if you're not using your lawyer, if you're not using your, I don't know what, we, what you would call it in, in law terms when you use the blood of Jesus, but that's a legal term for you to use. I'm not guilty. Well, I happen to know you are. I know, but I've just repented, and you can't tell me that I'm a sinner anymore because I'm saved by grace. Amen? Yeah. Anyway, and, I, and, and absolutely, we're not trying to sin. Can you say amen to that? Well, we have entrance into his presence. Number four, deliverance. Colossians 1.12 says, giving thanks. Do you give thanks to God for your deliverance? Giving thanks unto the Father which has made us uh, meet. What do you mean meet? Well, made us able, made us worthy to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Remember, if we walk in the light, what's the light? The light is the understanding and knowledge, revelation knowledge of the covenant we had through his word by Jesus Christ. All right. Who hath. This is written 2,000 years ago. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. This word translated is speaking also of a future event when we are translated in the rapture or through the resurrection into heaven. But God's speaking it as if it's already happened because positionally in Christ, what did we read the other day? What did we read last Wednesday in, second, uh, in, in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 6? We are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, far above principalities and powers, mights, and dominion, and every name that's named in this earth. And it's reiterated in chapter 1, verse 22 and, and 23, where it says that we're the body of Christ on this earth. And all things have been put under His feet. But if we've been raised up to sit in heavenly places positionally, in Christ Jesus, then everything is under our feet. Amen. What? When we're walking according to His Word in the will of God. When we're ding-donging around and just playing church and not really, you know, I know I'm kind of saved, but I'm still living in the world and doing my thing. and I'm not following the will of God for my life. I'm being disobedient. Well, then, you know what? What comes to you is your own fault, and it isn't God that does it. And you can't even deny, you can't even blame the devil because he's going to take advantage of every opening he gets. And I said it before, even if you're walking before the Lord right, you got kids and you got loved ones, and if they're not walking right, they, they make a door open for the devil because how many people know if, if he can't bug you and he hurts your kids, you're going, to be, you're going to be messed up. And so we want to do the best we can without being control freaks, amen, yes. and get our family members as close to the Lord as we can get. And when they're not... We can pray over them, and there will be, there'll be a, a bubble of grace over them for a while. There will come a day, you know, where that grace that you pray over your children and them, they're going to have to answer for. Yes. But, you know, when you're fighting and warring for them, and you're calling upon your angels, and you're calling upon God, the Holy Spirit, and you're praying protection over them, I tell you, I know God has delivered me so many times because of the prayers that were prayed over me. Even things that were prayed a long time ago when I was just a baby. And I mean, I had a, I had a grandpa that was a tongue-talking, uh, full-on Pentecostal. Well, he was Foursquare, right, Mom? Wasn't Grandpa Foursquare? Your dad. Yeah. Huh? You said he was Foursquare, but I know he was a tongue-talker. Pentecostal, okay. Well, whatever. But you guys went to a Foursquare church. And anyway... Um, I know my grandpa prayed for me. My cousin Cheryl, one of my older cousins, says, Grandpa used to pray over you and I. He, th he saw something special in us. And, you know, she was kind of a preacher for the Lord, too. 
uh, really on fire for the Lord at one time. But, you know, I didn't, I didn't immediately, when my grandpa prayed for me or my mom prayed for me, my aunt prayed for me, walk like I should. It took time. But you know what? God was working. And it doesn't mean I didn't go through things when I was being disobedient. But those things that I went through, God took advantage of them, even though he didn't do it to me. He took advantage of them to get my attention. I mean, some of you have, have gone through some bad stuff, and what God was doing in that, He wasn't doing the thing, but while you were distressed, if you, if you had a soft heart and you said, God, help me out, please get me out of this, and I promise I won't do this again. God took you at your word, and He delivered you. <laughs> and then you went back and did it again. You know, there came a time, you know, if you've done it five or six times to the Lord, He goes, this time I'm going to let you twist in the wind, and then I'll get you when you're sincere. Amen? And that does happen. But God knows what He's doing, but He's not leaving you or forsaking you. He's just letting you, he's letting you experience uh, something that's unpleasant so you'll turn to Him with your whole heart. Amen. Hallelujah. A clean conscience. Hebrews 9.14 How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered Himself up without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works, to serve a living God. Now, there's a whole lot in that and don't have time to just break it all down, but basically the power of the blood and the power of God's word and the Holy Spirit can help relieve your conscience. I got, you know, I got some regrets from the past, but I, you know, after having repented of those past regrets and significantly chastised myself, it's time to let them go because I can't do anything about what's behind me. All I can do is press toward, forward towards the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. At some point, you got to let your regrets go. Amen. I know, but you just don't. I, listen, I don't know what you did, but I know what I did, and I know how it's bothered me. Because, you know, it seems like once, once my mind got renewed and I got born again, uh, the things that I really didn't care about or didn't think about in the past when I wasn't living for God, they kind of came back. And some of it I know the devil took advantage of. Some of it was just me. But the other part of it was brought to the surface so I could deal with it. Come on. You know. I had, uh, I had a man try to kill me back when uh, Lori was pregnant with our oldest child. And I used to just, I was so, I was kind of away from God at the time. And that's kind of opened the door for it. And I used to hate that person. I used to, I, I, now God forgive me and understand this. I used to go burn in hell because I knew he was in hell. Well, that was a wrong spirit. Well, he got what he deserved. No, I don't, you know, I was actually witnessing to him before this all happened. And uh, I remember one time, man, God, God got me on that when I was thinking, because, you know, when you've had something traumatic happen, you kind of revisit it. I've got a little bit of this PTSD. And I remember one time God says, I want you to forgive him. I said, why? He's dead and he's in hell. What does it matter, God? He says, it doesn't matter concerning him at this point, but it's you. You need to forgive because it's, it's eating you alive on the inside. And I remember having a big cry over that. I cried my eyeballs out on that because, first of all, I was betrayed. Have you ever been betrayed? That really hurts bad when you've been betrayed. And I've been betrayed a couple of times. But that was the, the, the coup de grace right there. So if you've had things like that happen to you, man, you've got to get to that place where you're willing to let it go. No matter what it is. Because it's not hurting that other person, it's hurting you. It's keeping you from going forward. Amen? And by the way, how many times do you need to whine and cry over something like that? As bad as it is, I'm not demeaning what you've been through, but I mean, there comes a time you, you, you've ruminated, you've cried over it, you've cursed it. Uh, Larry Lee used to have this thing, I don't know if I'll say it completely right, but he used to say, when it comes to the time when you've been offended or you've been hurt, he says, don't nurse it, <laughs> don't curse it, but give it to God, give that to God, and disperse it, and God will reverse it. It's weird I can remember that from the 1980s. Did you hear that? Don't nurse it, don't curse it, give it to God, and, and disperse it, and He will reverse it. He will reverse the way you feel and the way you think. Amen? Where are we at? Uh, we get to...
cleansing and forgiveness, right? Huh? Clean conscience, yes. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot or wrinkle to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve a living God? Number six, cleansing and forgiveness. And I already read this scripture, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Number seven, protection. This is the one I like a lot. Protection from the wrath to come. And I'll say this, there's, there's protection for right now. The angels of the Lord are encamping round about me. Are they around you? Come on. Amen. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. And the angels of God are going to be there with them. And I'll tell you, the, the angels of God are powerful. And they love you and they're there to protect you. We're going to find out. It's going to be so amazing how many times our personal angel that God has given to us as a guardian angel, it, it's going to be amazing to see how many times he caused us to avert accidents and who knows what. I mean, if you lived where I lived and did the things I did, I can tell you right now, I put myself in danger many times and I know the Lord got me out of it. Some of you have done it too. All these kids that are out there, can you believe it? Jump in these, have you seen them go down these trails on their bikes? It's like super high, and I, I'm like, how do they even negotiate that? Because they're just going down rough hills, you know. Some of the things they do. I was watching these other kids on YouTube, and they, they were down in a, <clears throat> you know, a giant culvert that was as big as this, you know, probably like the Los Angeles River, which is a big cement thing. In Los, and they were going, and they would get, and they would go up on an angle and would do a, a 360 in the tunnel and they would do it one right after another I'm like where do they get the guts for that kind of stuff can you imagine their angels <laughs> i mean we probably really tax them sometimes amen exodus 12 13 and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are and when i see the blood i will pass over you 1 Thessalonians 1.10, and we're to wait for his son from heaven. What? We're waiting for him to come back. Titus uh, 2.11, amen. The grace of God has appeared once and for all time. The man teaching us to deny ungodliness, that we should live soberly and righteously. Uh, I, I don't, I'm butchering it a little bit. Until the day the Lord comes, amen. Looking for the, the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, amen. And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. For God, 1 Thessalonians 5, 9, has not appointed us unto wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. When that day of the Lord and his vengeance is, is coming down on the nations, amen, during the tribulation, you're not going to be here because you're not appointed to wrath. And that whole seven-year period is all about the wrath and justice of God. Amen? And I've already been declared righteous, the righteousness of God. Amen? Amen. And I'm not appointed under wrath. Every time I hear these rapture deniers, I'm just like, you know what? Your problem is it takes too much faith to believe in something supernatural. And you would rather try to figure it out how you're going to go through the tribulation period because in going through the tribulation period, you're going to be tested as to whether or not you're, you're purified and true to God. I don't need that to happen. I don't want that to happen. I'm not sure that I could do it myself. Amen? It will be a very difficult thing to go through that. And that will be the only way, uh, probably beheading or being killed, for the Lord Jesus Christ... I've already died through Christ. Yes. I've already been made clean through his blood. I'm going, to be, I'm going to be with Jesus in heaven while all this is going on. I don't know. According to your faith, be it unto you. If you want to be here, then maybe God will let you. I don't know. But I, I, I assume even those that don't believe in the rapture, if they're in Christ and they love Jesus, they're going too. What a surprise. Snatched up. Wait a minute. I, I'm supposed to go through the tribulation. Can you imagine that? No. I don't think any of them want to run back and go through that. It's going to be a horrible time. You know, uh, what is it? Two-thirds of the earth will be, will be killed during that seven-year period of time, especially in the last three and a half years. 
I mean, there's going to be cataclysms. They're talking about all these giant earthquakes, maybe even a pole shift, you know, Apophis coming down from heaven and smacking the earth like a giant, giant nuclear bomb. I don't want to be here. Crazy people running loose. Well, I heard something. Well, maybe I don't want to go down that road. It's kind of a downer. <clears throat> but anyway, I want to be uplifted tonight. Healing by his blood. Psalms 129.3, this is, this is a prophecy of what's going to happen to Jesus that was written before it happened. Surely he has, uh, or no, Psalms 129.3, the plowers plowed upon my back and they made long their furrows. Isaiah 53.4 and 5, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of god and afflicted but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed amen jesus the bible says was in all points tempted like unto us yet without sin he passed the test every time he never gave in. He fulfilled the law and the prophets and every temptation that the devil threw at him. Believe you me, in his flesh, he got pulled upon, but he never gave in to it. Amen. He never acted upon it. Praise God. Um, number nine, the very essence of the new life for, for the Christian and the eternal fellowship with God. John six fifty six. He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood dwelleth in him and I dwelleth in me and I in him. Well, we just took partake of the, the elements this morning, amen, that denoted that, that wonderful thing that Jesus did for us. We entered in to the Last Supper this morning, even though it was in the morning. <laughs> we entered into it, amen, and it is perpetual, and it will go on until Jesus returns, amen? And that, that will be afforded to any, any believer that will partake of it. Number 10, the most expensive exchange rate yet. The blood is the most expensive exchange rate ever. Acts 20 and 28. Therefore take heed unto yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Ah, oh, he's talking to me, Pastor Kelly, Pastor Al, Pastor Lori. I made you overseers. Feed the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood. 1 Peter 1.19, and I'm reading out of the Amplified. But you were purchased with the precious blood of Christ, the Messiah, like that of a sacrificial lamb without blemish or spot. So, you know, in conclusion, what does God want us to do? He wants us to go live our lives in Christ. Enjoy our families. Enjoy the life that we have. But always be on call and be available for God. Amen. We've been cleansed by his blood. We're saved from the wrath to come. Praise the Lord. But there are people that are not ready yet. There are people that are not ready. There are people, of course, this church believes in the pre-tribulation pre partial rapture view. Uh, why, Pastor? Because the rapture is a reward for readiness. Do they have to believe exactly like you? No, but they have to be, they have to be looking for the Lord. They can't have one foot in the world where, you know, they come to church once in a while or they come to church uh, every Sunday and, and they, really don't, they really don't worship the Lord during the week. They really don't seek the Lord during the week. And yet they can go out and drink and carouse and do whatever they want to do and still call themselves a Christian and do it when the Holy Spirit is continually convicted and convicted them. I hope I'm totally wrong about this. I hope you can go live any way you want after you've asked Jesus in your heart. But I tell you what, the Bible says make your calling and election sure. And if you really love him, you're going to keep his commandments and you're going to do your best to walk the way Jesus wants you to walk and you're going to walk according to his will and according to the dictates of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, it's really not dictates. He, he, he tries to get you to cooperate with him. Yeah. Amen. Those that are led by the Spirit of God are the mature sons and daughters of God. You know, the babies are covered because they don't know anything yet. The more you know, the more he expects out of you, just like with your kids. The more your kids know, the more you expect out of them. We've watched little Ari since she's six months old, and, you know, she just get away with anything until recently when she starts acting out, and we have to correct her. Do we correct her? How do we correct her? Well, she's not my kid, so she doesn't get spanked by me. I'm the nice uh, papa. 
but sometimes Annie's got to put her in check and make her sit down and and uh, in the in the naughty chair. Not that we call it that, but you got to straighten them out. You got to correct them, and but yet we expect more out of her because she's talking more and she's she's able to communicate and yet she wants to cut up sometimes because she's a kid, right? So most of the time we overlook it. But our children. They, they get to a place where they challenge you, where they try you, where they, they try to push the boundaries, and you've got to set, reset those boundaries because if you don't, at an early age, they're going to really push them as they get older, and they'll know that you don't mean business. So anyway, that, that's part of it. So in conclusion, you know, God has, has sprinkled our heart with his blood, and so we're to go live our lives, amen? The Bible says in Romans 5.11, and not only so, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we now have received reconciliation through Jesus' blood. And you know what? We need to remember that the blood covenant gives us authority. So the next time you're pleading blood, the blood, when you feel like the devil's getting in your, into your uh, business or he's dealing with you and messing with you, and you plead the blood, you'll understand and know that you have power and why you have power to plead the blood. You've been given the right to use that as a weapon of warfare. Can you say amen? amen. Do you love the Lord? Yes. We had a good day today. Yes. I, hope you, I hope you enjoyed worshiping the Lord this morning and tonight. Amen. And you should go this week and be blessed. And you know what? Keep your eyes open for those that the Lord's going to send across your path. Always be looking for those folks. Amen. There are opportunities out there all the time. And even if you're not witnessing to people, there's always opportunities for you to be kind to somebody. Amen. We have older people in this church like Sue and, and I know um, uh, Pat and, and uh, <clears throat> Earl, you know, they're kind of going through it. They can't really come to church because Earl's not doing really great right now. It's not really a good thing for him to go up and down the stairs. You could always call Pat. If you don't know the number, you can call us. You can call Pat and tell her you're praying for her. And, you know, she'd probably tell you, come on over and see us or something like that. But it's not all on Pastor Craig and I to, to go see everybody. I mean, yeah, we're pastors and that's part of our, our job description. But it's, it's, it's the church. Yeah. You know, and a phone call doesn't hurt to just call and say, you know what? I've been missing you at church. And I just want you to know that, that I love you and I'm praying for you. Amen. Sometimes that's all you got to do to make somebody's day. Amen. Hallelujah. Want to pray? You're cleansing of our conscience. Yes, Lord. By the power that's in the blood, Lord God, the freedom that we have in you, Jesus. Lord God, I thank you that as we go out of this place, we go out victorious. Lord God, more than conquerors through you because you love us, Lord. Uh, send people across our path that we may minister to them, Lord. Uh, bless them, Lord God, and I thank you that uh, you bless those that we receive a blessing as well. Father, I pray a blessing upon us. Your people yes. tonight, Lord God, may we, may we walk in love. Lord God, may our minds be stayed upon you, Lord God, and everything we do glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Bless you.